I am here uh, for another episode of my podcast, this time speaking in English. So uh, I've been wanting to record this podcast, this episode for a few weeks now, but um, my life is, has, has been a, a bit busier than usual with a lot of, uh, a lot of little... Um, issues to tend to that although they aren't very troublesome or worrisome they take up much of my time and mental capabilities so um, it's nothing that isn't easily worked up but um, it requ requires time and um, and so it has been something that has been preventing me from recording this podcast But today I would like to uh, show you a few of my latest projects, um, so I will get, get on with it. So uh, today is the 4th of December, so we're uh, almost at the end of the year. Uh, 2022 has been a very challenging year for me. Um, probably 10 times worse than 2020, the, the pandemic year. And I am really hoping to get to the end of it and see if uh, <laughs> 2023 will bring a bit of renewal and uh, a lot more um, happy and good things because 2022 has been a uh emotional roller coaster a uh, financial roller coaster and at it has been very very uh it's been a bad year for me and i hadn't had one of these in probably in a decade or so but uh not what i'm here to talk about so i went on a tangent sorry about that um, today I will be showing you two of my finished projects, uh, one that I completed a few months uh, back and one that I've completed just this week. Um, and then I will show you one of my ongoing projects, uh, knit knitting uh, projects, and then I will show you one of my uh, ongoing crochet projects and a crochet project that I've completed uh, in 2014. It's one of my proudest makes and I would really, really like to show you and talk to you a little bit about it. So let's get on with it. Um, first off, I'm going to show you one of my uh, knitting projects. It's uh, a project that I've completed, I believe, at the end of August, I think. It had been on my needles for more than a year, I guess, um, and <laughs> it's uh, it's a funny project uh, uh, because it started out as a pair of socks, uh, colorwork socks, and <laughs> somewhere along the line, I realized that they wouldn't fit. And since I wasn't uh, very keen on uh, frogging them. Um, s just happened that uh, I started looking at it and I realized, well, they can't be socks that fit me, but probably they will be mittens that, that fit me because I usually start my uh, socks uh, from the cuff down. I always start at the leg, not at the toe. I've done a uh, toe up socks too, but uh, it's not my preferred method. I prefer cuff down. So I was, um, I was still, there was still the possibility of uh, turning the, these socks, uh, these very small socks because they were color work and I uh, didn't consider that the tension uh, for my color work uh, knitted fabric uh, might not be um, as loose as I would need uh, for them to fit me. If you hear some rumbling in the back, uh, it's because it finally started to rain here in the south of Portugal, 
which is very much appreciated. Uh, we have had severe drought for the past years and um, if it didn't start raining soon and for a very um, um, prolonged time, uh, our water reserves will, will only last us for uh, one year. So we need the rain and uh, it started raining yesterday uh, finally and today uh, there's a bit of a, sun, a thunderstorm so you will probably hear some rumbling in the back. So it's only the weather. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, so these are my mittens. They are, uh, one is a little bit bigger than the other. Uh, I, I believe that I'm having some tension issues when I need the first one. It's all, it always turns out smaller than the second one. Probably because when I'm knitting the first one, I'm still, uh, I don't know, uh, opening the path or something. And on the second one, I already know the path. So uh, I guess I feel a little bit more relaxed. So my tension gets a little bit looser. So there's that. So I will probably in the future have to knit them um, at the same time. I don't really like to knit two, two socks at a time, uh, at the same time, in the same needle. Uh, the tangling of the yarns gets in, gets on my nerves, so um, I've tried that and it didn't work out. So, um, But I've never had this uh, tension problem uh, before. It's only been in the last uh, few months uh, with socks and with mittens. So I will probably will have to knit them a little bit of one, a little bit of the other, so the tension doesn't differ so much. These are uh, my uh, socks turned mittens that um, their name is tile in uh, azulejo in Portuguese. It means tile. Uh, I am a huge fan of tiles. Uh, it's something that I have this um, fascination with. Uh, it's something that is very um, cultural to Portugal. It's it's uh, one of our many uh, arts that define us. Uh, and uh, this this design, this uh, replica of uh, Portuguese tile. Uh, is not my design. It's uh, it was designed by a dear knitting knitting friend knitter friend. Uh, her name is Marta Martins. She's a Portuguese knitter, and she uh, designed this this uh, color work chart for a pair of socks that she called Lisboa uh, Lisbon, because uh, Lisbon is one of the many cities in Portugal that has lots and lots of tiles all over the place covering entire uh, house fronts and um, it's very traditional and characteristic to to Lisbon and so uh, her socks ha also have a texture textured part but I I was in love when I saw this color work chart and decided that I wanted to make a, a pair of socks uh, with it, so but it didn't turn out as a pair of socks. I will eventually knit a pair of socks, but with another uh, stitch number uh, to compensate for the the uh, for the gauge, so that they can fit me. Because these are uh, fifty six stitches here at the at the cuff. Uh, this ribbing has 56 stitches and then there's an increase for 60 stitches and um, I somewhat had to plan where I was going to put the um, the thumb uh, hole and uh, I believe that I repeated the graph uh, two and uh, two and two times i believe so this is what they look like when they're on i 
use mittens. I start using mittens by the end of October and usually only stop using them by end by the end of February, probably mid-March, because um, I am a very, very chilly person and I can't really withstand the cold. Um, so when it gets chillier, I start using my mittens. I use them for, for work. Uh, because I can move my fingers and um, and use the the computer keyboard so um, and yes I've used them this year it's been a very atypical year in terms of um, temperatures the weather has been really really crazy and you will know why uh, I can say this uh, with the full uh, with full certainty you will understand that when I talk to you about uh, one of my crochet projects. So these are my tile mittens. I absolutely love them. I made them with um, two and a half millimeter needles. I used, uh, I started out by using double pointed needles, the double pointed needles, uh, two and a half millimeter. Then uh, it wasn't working out uh, because at the joints I couldn't quite um, get the floats um correctly uh, then i changed to magic loop and it wasn't working out either because i um i knit um i knit portuguese style um usually when i'm doing color work i use use portuguese uh knitting style with one um with one yarn uh, around my neck, with both yarns uh, around my neck, one tension in my right hand and the other one tension in my left hand. Um, and when you're knitting in this style, you have your um, contrast color in your left and your main color on your uh, right. Uh, and I wasn't uh, being able to keep uh, the, the correct tension on the floats when changing uh, from when one needle to the other. So I ended up uh, changing back again to uh, nine inch circular needles, Xiaobu needles, and that's when it all started to, to turn out okay. But then I had to change my knitting style to a mixed one. So I was knitting a Portuguese style combined with continental style for um and then i would have my contrast color uh again on my left hand and my main color on my right hand uh let me rewind when i'm knitting portuguese style when i tension both both the uh, yarns uh, around my neck one on each hand my main color is, is is to the left and my contrast color is to the right because if that if I won't don't do that, they will end up mixed up. Um, so mm, lately, my preferred method for color work is a mixed one. So I tension my main color uh, in the Portuguese style uh, around my neck and uh, tensioned on my right hand, and my contrast color uh, continental on my left hand. So these are my tile mittens. They were made with um, a Portuguese uh, brand of yarn. It's called uh, Mondine. It's 100% um, uh, wool yarn made from Portuguese sheep. That was it's it was uh, it's a brand by Rosa Pomar. It's one of the one of the. It's someone who has um, done so much to um, bring back uh, Portuguese uh, sheep uh, back into the knitting uh, scenery. Uh, she's done a remarkable work of, um, of gathering information about uh, Portuguese uh, sheep breeds. Uh, their yarn. She she found a way to document all of it or most of it. She's still doing that work and she has been developing a lot of um, 
of yarns made from uh, Portuguese uh, breeds of sheep. So this is a hundred percent um, wool from Portuguese sheep. It's called Mondi. It's a terrific rustic yarn. Uh, it's a fingering um, weight yarn and it's perfect for mittens, socks, uh, it's mostly for socks but you, I've seen beautiful um, garments made out of it so and it's perfect for color work so I'm doing also um, another uh, another piece uh, with using that the, the leftover from this and I added a few more colors also replicating Portuguese styles and it's a cowl uh, by Audrey Borrego it's the ceramic cowl um, and but I've just only uh, began to knit it so when I'm further up on it I will show you so this is a project that I finished uh, during this year and the next one are my birthday socks these were finished uh, just this week uh, I've started them on the 14th of October which is my birthday and they are still wet because I, <laughs> I washed them yesterday and uh, they are still on, on the sock blockers. These sock blockers were made by my husband. I basically demanded that, he, that he'd make them for me. I gave him the template and he made them. So this is um, a, a Portuguese uh, hand dyed yarn by my dear friend Maria João from Pointing Zovent, little stitches in the wind, as I like to call it in English. Um, and it's uh, a design that I came up with. It's um, slip stitches um, that that uh, don't follow. They are kind of mixed matched. Uh, from one um, color row from the other. Um, she um, hand dyed this for me. Um, it was my choice of colors. It's her mix and match number 12 uh, because I'm a very pink and blue girl. I, I like al almost any color. There are many colors that I don't like but pinks and blues are definitely a soft spot for me. Um, so I also knit this, these socks uh, cuff down, I used the sh uh, German short row uh, heel and I'm in love with them. I will probably be uh, using them for the first time on Christmas Day. Um, so these are my birthday socks. Uh, about um, crochet. Uh, what I'm currently knitting, one of my many projects, is this uh, cowl. It's a cowl that uh, is uh, designed by a Portuguese uh, designer. Her name is Carolina Frias. Uh, she is the host and behind the Portuguese podcast uh, Mundo Bonit. She usually uh, has um, an episode every Wednesday and titled On Wednesdays. So, uh, and she published this design, uh, I believe, uh, in October. It's a slip stitch cowl. Uh, I've just started it on the 2nd of December, so probably what two days ago, yeah. And uh, this is what it looks like in the back. I I love it, both the back and the and the front, the right side and the wrong side. It has this kind of fake uh, bubbles. This the the, the yarn puffs out. Uh, I'm using uh, seven seven millimeter needles, my interchangeable knit pros, uh, wooden, and um, I'm not usually someone who uses this um, this big size, this big this size so big. Uh, I usually don't go any 
any further than the six millimeter needle. So this is a <laughs> something new for me. I'm using these two balls of yarn. Oh god, now they unraveled. So I'm combining these two. These are deep stash from my from my stash at bottom, I believe 2013, I guess. And it's a Katia Merino uh, Maxi Merino. It's the it's um pure merino superwash wool and it's 55% uh virgin wool and 45% uh acrylic. Um and I am enjoying this uh this knit. It's very um, it has a, a, a very uh, nice rhythm, so and you can't go wrong. Um, it I'm using these two stitch markers. This one is a little snail. These markers are made by a Portuguese marker uh, designer. Her name is. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh God, I forgot her name. Oh, but I'll put. I know the brand name. The brand name is Goodies, Goodies for Knitters. She makes these beautiful um, polymer um, uh, markers. These little, these little do toys. <laughs> They're like toys, candies. And this is a snail. This one was gifted to me by a dear uh, friend, Fernanda, and she gifted me this because I'm hosting a, um, uh, I've hosted, uh, it's the second year now, uh, it's a, some sort of pen pal uh, change, exchange of letters, and also has some goodies uh, for mostly knitters because it, the people that have joined in are knitters, knitters and crocheters, and I call it snail mail. So <laughs> she gave me, she offered me this uh, little tiny marker um, to represent my snail mail <laughs> initiative. So um, this is a cowl, and I'm not sure if I will have enough yarn um, to join it. Uh, in terms of height, because this is supposed to, uh, I have a provisional cast on here, so I'm supposed to knit and go round and uh, join with a Kitchener stitch around here, but I'm not sure if I will have um, enough yarn, because I only have these two balls, so I will probably, if if I don't have enough uh, yarn, I will probably will have to join at the sides. It will be a very snug fit um, cowl, I believe. But I think it, I can make it get past my head and <laughs> to cozy up my neck. So um, this has been a very me meditative, me meditational uh, project uh, for me. And I hope to finish it by the end of the year. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because of the end of the year or something, but um, I've started looking at my ongoing projects and I've came to the... I've, I already know this for a long time, but sometimes I choose to not see it um, or look the other way. And But now I have... Um, made the conscience um, conscient uh, conclusion that I have too many projects on my needle. Some of them are very small or are uh, very close to being finished so there's no reason why they shouldn't be finished. So uh, I'm, I, I'm blaming it on the end of the year and so I'm I've been trying for the past few weeks to complete projects that need to be completed so I can have some spatial space uh, 
uh, in my mind uh, to address new projects in 2023, I guess. So um, this one I will hope to complete it by the end of the year. I have another crochet project that I hope to finish uh, this week. I will show you that on the next uh, episode. So I will talk to you about this um, yearly project that I've been working on. Not so much because it's been stopped since the last, uh, by, since last February, I guess. And uh, it's something that I will have to to give it some time and uh, attention. And it's my temperature blanket. It's a I it's a yearly project, like I said. Um, this is what I've done so far. I've chosen the ripple um, um, stitch uh, to make this blanket. When I uh, started working on, uh, starting, started to um, have craft projects, my first craft was crochet. For uh, two or three years, it was the craft that I uh, usually um, uh, took time with. So, uh, and then I learned to knit and crochet was left a bit behind and it had been a while since I had a crochet project. So, um, Compagnie des Agulhas, which is um, um, a school that we have here in Portugal, it translates somewhat like a uh, needle company. Um, and it's uh, also a store and it has a teaching uh, a component for sewing, for uh, all the crafts you can think of, macrame, uh, knitting, um, uh, we have something also called uh, friuleiras, I don't really uh, remember the translation for that, um, but Oh, punch needle also. Um, there's they teach uh, all sorts uh, of crafts. And at the beginning, late last year, they um, challenged me to enter this year uh, year long uh, project crochet. I could do it knitting or crochet. And uh, since I believe blankets to be um, faster and uh, better. Uh, made in crochet, I decided that I was going to make a crochet blanket. So um, this this year-long project consists of what? You design um, a range of uh, temperatures and you, at a certain interval of temperatures, you attribute a color and then for one entire year, you register the, the temperature for that day. You can choose an hour or the maximum temperature or the minimum for that day. And you will crochet with that color on that, that you attributed to that um, temperature uh, interval. So uh, I uh, designed a two degrees Celsius, because that's what we use here in Portugal. Uh, every two degrees there is a new color. I have, I'm not sure how many colors I have chosen for each. I think I, it goes around, uh, I won't, I hope I'm not mistaken, but probably 28 colors, different colors. And I also chose uh, six different colors considering the weather for that day. If it's sunny, if it's raining, if it's windy and things like that. So I've been registering the temperatures and the weather conditions for every day for since the 1st of January of this year. So by the end of the year, I should have a blanket that is colorful. Uh, considering the temperatures and I I only made up until uh, I believe the 
first week of February, so I'm very, very behind on this project. Um, you have here, these colors range uh, between 12 degrees and uh, the green is for 17, I believe. This salmon color is for days where it's a little bit cloudy. Yellow is for sunny days. Uh, this gray is for um, dark days, where there's there's um, uh, where the sun is, where the the sky is completely gray. I also have uh, I haven't started. Uh, I also have this purple for windy days. Um, so yes, this is what I've come up, what I've made so far. Although I keep uh, reg registering um, all the um, all the temperatures, uh, I will show you how that almost it's in Portuguese, so you won't probably understand it, but I will explain it. So it's I drew up the plan, something like this. This was my first plan, but um, with the, the colors. Uh, but I changed it, um, uh, and it's not like that, that exactly. Um, I can show you all the yarn, all the colors that I'm using. So, all the colors. Oh, oops, sorry, fell off. So, here are six, seven, seven, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. 20, 24, 26, 28, 30, uh, I believe 31 in total, because I added one last one. Because we've had some weeks of uh, desert um, dust uh, from the Sahara Desert and I decided that I wanted to incorporate it. So my blanket has been um, completed up until the day 14 of February. So here's the temperatures for each day. I decided to register it at noon. Uh, I have um, um, an, al an alarm on my phone at, that goes off at noon and I uh, register the temperature for that day at that hour and I also am registering, I don't know if you can see here, the minimum um, temperature and what's the um, the weather that day. Here it says Cell Limpo, it means it's sunny, there's no clouds in the sky. And what I came to realize, um, we usually have uh, cold winters here and by then the, usually the temperatures uh, come down by, they drop up until the 2 degrees, sometimes we've had 0 degrees. It never goes uh, below that zero. It's it's really the lowest, I think. Uh, but usually in January, we we do have days, many days, where we have temperatures that range from three, four, five, six, ten degrees, but never uh, higher than that. And uh, when I look at the log that I made. Um, I have temperatures that don't go below 12 degrees and um, we had in, we had days where there was 18 degrees in January and it's very very atypical even in the south of Portugal where it's mostly sunny and the the bad thing is that we usually get a lot of rain in it's it it was customary that we had a lot of rain during the months of December and January and February. We usually had a break during March um, with good temperatures and then the rain would come back in, in April. But um, 
the thing was that if I look at my log, it didn't rain for a single day in January. So that's very worrying because since we've been um, going through severe drought, um, a complete month of January with no rain whatsoever, it's it, it worries me because that means um, that the dams won't have enough water to supply to the population and I work at the water company so I'm very much aware of these things. Um, so this is a project, <laughs> sorry for the tangent on the on the weather and weather concerns, but um, this is a project that I will have to dedicate some more time and um, attention so I can complete it. Uh, I will do uh, four, um, four parts this wide, so it doesn't get uh, seven meters long. Uh, I plan to make this blanket for my um, king size bed, so I will have three more uh, parts like this, uh, this wide and this high, and then I will do a edge for the last day of the year for this uh, blanket. Uh, or probably I will do an edge with the, all the weather uh, conditions so it gets really, really colorful. And this is an ongoing crochet, crochet project. I um, This is not a foreign type of project for me. I've had... I made one very similar in the past, in the year 2014. Uh, where I and I will show you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the close up. Uh, this is my. I won't be able to show you the full beauty of it. I will post a picture somewhere around here so you can see it. And this is my crochet mood blanket that I made for the year 2014. It's. Um, you have here all seven colors that I used. So basically this crochet mood, mood blanket was a year-long project also. Uh, I used acrylic yarn to make it and basically um, for I would make a granny square with seven rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, for each day of the week. So every day I would register my mood um, and for each mood I chose a color. So I ended up with um, blocks that, whose color combinations were completely random depending on my mood. And um, I have this one and this one. They're all different. Uh, I don't think there's two um, two granny squares that look like the same that have, that are the same. Um, I made it for the year two thousand and fourteen because that was the year that I was pregnant with my second child, and I thought it would be a very memorable year so I decided to record it somehow in my crafts and it it was a very pleasant project to work on uh, this blanket is I believe 120 centimeters uh, wide and 175 centimeters long it covers um, uh, it covers very well a single single bed um, a single bed, but I usually use it to cover my oldest son's bed, which is a, a double a double bed, and and it's one of my proudest makes. So. Um, 
and I decided to make a granny square uh, blanket because um, when I was uh, growing up my mother was a, was a very crafty woman and she made a granny square blanket. Uh, I remember that it was oranges and greens and it had a satin ribbon edging that she sewed by hand and when after after she died i i remember that the blanket was kept away for some reason i don't know why probably something uh, when it came to the summer and we kept it and we never took it out again so it was stored in a in a trunk somewhere and when i found it uh it had all been eaten up by silverfish so it was pretty damaged and I couldn't rescue it so but by then I uh, didn't know I wasn't very much into crafting so I knew how to crochet but I had never done granny squares uh, whatsoever so when I started to to dedicate myself to crochet and to knitting uh, one of the things that I knew that I wanted to do was to replicate that blanket and have one in my house. So uh, I guess that's the the big reason. And and then when I saw the the project being announced on, I, I believe it was a blog post, I decided to join in and it was really, really fun. And I have the year that my second son was born uh, documented on a blanket with lots and lots of color so um, I hope uh, you like it I really do it's really heavy it's really heavy I used uh, an acrylic yarn because of its price it's cheaper of course and because it's something that I might want to uh, wash on on the machine on the washing machine um, I needed to not be something that I could concern myself with um, felting or getting damaged uh, when washed. So I used um, a yarn that's called uh, BMG, the Milton's. Um, I still have some leftover yarn for th that I'm using sometimes for toys and amigurumis. And yeah, this is my crochet mood blanket for 2014. And lastly, I would like to show you a book that I bought uh, recently. Um, I'm a very uh, keen uh, sock knitter. I love knitting socks. Um, and I was... Um, I want I I bought this book. It's called Socks Box uh, by Stein and Stitch. It's from Kerstin Balta, Balka, and uh, I bought this book. Uh, you'll find it funny. I bought this book because of one particular uh, sock project that <laughs> comes this this pair of socks. I saw these pair this pair of socks in a blog post around five years ago and I decided that I wanted to make them but I I, I was under the belief that uh, it was something it was a, a project uh, pattern that I could buy on Ravelry and when I went looking for it I realized that it wasn't it was published in on this book and I had already bought the yarn for it on, on the same colors. I bought um, Rose of Mar uh, Mondin, the same yarn I used for my tile mittens. And then all of a sudden I realized that I would have to buy the book to be able to knit the socks. So I had everything um, at hand except for the pattern. So I, I bought the book. I ordered the book on Book Depository because it was, the, the, the price was lower on Book Depository than on Amazon. And because I was um, very lazy to read the fine print and was under the impression 
that the the book version on Book Depository was uh, written in English and not on the original German <laughs> language. And when the book arrived, I was a little bit surprised to see that it was really in German. And even though some of my fellow knitters advised me to return it, um, I decided against it because I learned to speak German on when I was in high school. It's a language that I can understand. It's a language that I really love. And basically all you need to uh, understand on this book is the color work chart. So, uh, and I'm truly, truly surprised by this book. It's it was a tremendous um, invest, good investment because it has beautiful. It has twenty six different um, sock patterns, mostly color work. Uh, practically all of them are color work. Just one or two aren't, and they are. I'm, I don't know. They're the first is the next is prettier than the previous, and. I think I will be making this. This one is in color work. It's texture. It's really beautiful. And I don't think I will just knit that pair. I will knit pretty much every pair around here. So these are just lovely. They remind me of the Hidari uh, sweater, uh, which is one that I will uh, want to make somewhere along in the future. This one is equally beautiful. They're very simple, the color work charts, but they're just beautiful. This one also just gorgeous. And of course, I'm a woman of pinks, so yes, this one will also be uh, knit somewhere along on the future. This one too with the greys. So beautiful. And they're really intricate but when you look at the charts they're really simple. And yes, tremendous good investment. So there will be uh, many projects uh, coming out of this book uh, somewhere along the lines. Um, and I guess, oh, this one too. I love this one. These are beautiful for, for, for Christmas. Um, so I'm in love with this book. <laughs> uh, I hope you, uh, I'm not sure if you have seen this book or not. Uh, but if you haven't, go check it out. Um, and for today, that's pretty much everything I have to talk to you about. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will hope to see you again real soon. Bye!